गुड आफ्टरनून दिस इज आर ट्वेल्थ एंड फाइनल सेशन फॉर दिस कोर्स ऑन गेट फिजिक्स प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग सेशन सो इन ऑल ऑफ दीज सेशन इन ऑल द प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव लुकड एट टॉपिक्स फ्रॉम मैथमेटिकल फिजिक्स क्वानम मैकेनिक्स एंड जनरल एप्टीट्यूड एंड एंड ऑल्सो इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेटिक थियोरी सो यू कैन watch the previous videos for any of these four topics that you want to study in today uh, for the last session we would be looking at some questions from general aptitude and some questions from mathematical physics so once again i would uh, just provide you with all the relevant links for this course so i will put them up in the zoom chat box so the first link uh is the link to the youtube channel so this is the channel where all these video recordings would be available and they would be live streamed on the youtube channel as well so you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel and watch the previous sessions or the live streams and any other problem solving sessions from the channel the next link is the google drive link so this is the link where all these lecture notes would be uploaded so after each session these lecture notes are uploaded on the google drive folder and the final link is the link to the discord server so we have created a discord server for all the students so you can go ahead and join that discord server and the benefit of that is you can post your questions over there at any point of time that you feel like and either i or your even your fellow students and classmates would help you with those questions and doubts and we will provide you with the solutions to those particular questions and you need you need not wait for every saturday for these weekly live sessions and the discord server would be active even after this session is over so our course uh, gets over today so today is the 12th and the last and final session for this course but that discord server would be active even after the completion of this course so even after uh, the session you can go ahead and join the discord server and you can keep posting your questions over there and i would be trying my best to answer those questions and even your friends can help you over there so after today there would be no more live sessions as such but the discord server is still active so that would be helpful for all of you so as always we start with a few general aptitude questions and then we move towards some technical physics based questions so today we are focusing on mathematical physics so we will start first with general aptitude and then move on to mathematical physics the first question is a comprehension type question it says that a smart city integrates all modes of transport uses clean energy and promotes sustainable use of resources it also uses technology to ensure safety and security of the city something which critics argue will lead to a surveillance state which of the following can be logically inferred from the above paragraph so there are four statements and we need to see which statement or which of these statements are uh, can be inferred from the above paragraph first statement is all smart cities encourage the formation of surveillance states this is clearly incorrect next option is surveillance is an integral part of a smart city third option is sustainability and surveillance go hand in hand in a smart city again uh, it doesn't really make sense fourth option is there is the perception that smart cities promote surveillance so you notice that uh, statement 2 and statement 4 might sound similar but they are different statement 2 says that surveillance is an integral part of a smart city that is a smart city should be having and should be promoting surveillance the formation of a surveillance state and the fourth statement says 
that there is a perception. So the important word over here is perception that smart cities promote surveillance. And so the correct option is statement four. So the correct option is option C, four only. So you need to pay attention to this word perception because uh, it's from this last part which critics argue. Okay, so certain people feel or they perceive that smart cities would lead to the formation of a surveillance state. So the fourth op uh, statement or option C is the correct option. Moving on to the next question. Students taking an exam are divided into two groups P and Q such that each group has the same number of students. The performance of each of the students in a test was evaluated out of 200 marks. It was observed that the mean of group P was 105, while that of group Q was 85. It seems that these people are not performing quite well, group Q compared to group P. The standard deviation of group P was 25, while that of group Q was 5. Assuming that the marks were distributed on a normal distribution, which of the following statements will have the highest probability of being true? So we have a bunch of statements. First statement that no student in group Q scored less marks than any student in group P. Then we have no student in group P scored less marks than any student in group Q. Most students of group Q scored marks in a narrower range than the students in group P. And the fourth statement is the median of marks of group P is 100. So let us look at it. So a normal distribution means a Gaussian distribution. So normal or Gaussian, they mean the same thing. So I have uh, drawn some representative graphs over here. So this green curve is for group P and this blue curve is for group Q. So group Q has mean 85 and group P has mean 105. And group Q has a standard deviation of 5. So that means if this is the mean location. So standard deviation so that this is like this. So this region is the standard deviation of a Gaussian function and that is 5. And for group P, the standard deviation is 25. So this is the mean and then you have so this is two times the standard deviation. So the width is two times the standard deviation and just from the mean that is just the standard deviation. So this is 25 and this part right here is 5. So these are the mean and standard deviations for group P and group Q and you can uh, clearly see that option C is the correct option which says that most students of group Q scored uh, marks in a narrower range than students in group P. This narrower range, narrower range is because of a lower standard deviation. So because the standard deviation is smaller, lower or smaller, so smaller standard deviation. So because the standard deviation has a smaller value, uh, that's why uh, the students would be scoring marks in a narrower range. And for group P, the standard deviation is pretty high. It's 25 marks. So uh, their marks distribution would be spread out over a large range. So option C is the correct option. Moving further, a window is made up of a square portion and an equilateral triangular, triangle portion above it. The base of the triangular portion coincides with the upper side of the square. If the perimeter of the window is 6 meters, the area of the window in meter square is, we need to find out. So let us draw this window. So 
so this is the square portion of the window and then we have a triangular equilateral triangular portion of the window so this is my window and the perimeter of the window would be this blue shaded part this is the perimeter note that this common part this common side uh, side common to the square and the triangle is not part of the perimeter so perimeter is this blue shaded part which is 6 meters and if this side is x then that is equal to 5x because you have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 sides. This common side is not counted. So this gives us x equal to 6 by 5 meters which is equal to 1.2 meters. So area is area of square, area of square plus area of triangle. So that is area of squared is what? X squared and area of triangle of equilateral triangle is root 3 by 4 X squared. So this is 1.2 squared plus root 3 by 4, 1.2 squared in meter squared. And this comes out to be approximately 2.06 meter squared. So option B. The next question is also a logical reasoning type question. So the fact is, uh, we are given a fact that if it rains, then the field is wet. So uh, then we have the following statements. Statement 1, that it rains. Statement 2, that the field is not wet. Statement 3, the field is wet. And statement 4, it did not rain. So the question says, which of the options given below is not logically possible based on the given fact? So the correct option is option C. If 1, then 2. That is, if it rains, then the field is, uh, sorry, this is not the correct option. Option B is the correct option. That if it rains, then the field is wet. So, if 1, if 1, then 3 is that if it rains, then the field is wet. So this is exactly the same as the fact that we are given. So the correct option is option C. If you look at the other options, option A, if 3 then 4, that means if the field is wet, then it did not rain. This is not a conclusion that we can draw. Option C is if 1 then 2, that if it rains, then the field is not wet. This is a uh, completely opposite. Oh, sorry. I think I missed out this word. So, that's why. The question says, which of the following is not logically possible? So, in that case, then option C is the correct option. Sorry. So, option B. So, option B is logically correct option. This is exactly the same as the fact. So, pardon me for the error. So, option C is the correct option in this case. And you all uh, should also be careful in reading the question. So, I missed out this word not over here. So, in many questions, you would uh, notice that this word not or never or these kind of uh, negation type uh, questions are there. So, you need to be careful about this word. So, I missed this word not. You cannot afford to miss this word. So, be careful in reading the question. So, the question is which of the options given below is not logically possible based on the given fact. So, it is option C that is if it rains 
that the field is not wet. This is clearly completely opposite to the fact that we have. The other options, if 3 then 4, so if the field is wet, then it did not rain. Well, this may or may not be true because the fact is that if it rains, then the field is wet. But the field can be wet uh, with or without the rain. Maybe some other aspects are there to make the field wet. Then option B is if 1, then 3. That if it rains, then the field is wet. This is the same as the fact. Then option D is if 2, then 4. That if the field is not wet, then it did not rain. This is also true and this is possible that if the field is not wet, then it probably did not rain. So the only logically completely incorrect option is option C, which is if it rains, then the field is not uh, wet, which is completely opposite. This is opposite to the fact. Then the last question from general aptitude. Five teams have to compete in a league with every team playing every other team exactly once before going to the next round. How many matches will have to be held to complete the league round of matches? So there are five teams and a match is played between two teams. So you need to choose or select or uh, two teams so this is 5c2 will be the total number of league matches which is 10 option b so this completes our section on general aptitude and now we will move to the next section on mathematical physics the first question from mathematical physics is the number of independent components of the symmetric tensor Aij with indices i, j equal to 1, 2, 3 is we need to find out. So symmetric. Symmetric tensor means Aij equal to Aji. So matrix representation of this symmetric tensor would be by a symmetric matrix. So now let us, and this is a 3 cross 3 matrix because we have indices going up to 3. So let us uh, make a matrix. So we have some diagonal elements. And then Aij equal to Aji for the symmetry condition. So let's say if we have an element here, then same element in the uh, symmetrically opposite location. This element, same as this element. This element is same as this element. So you can see that these terms are reflective, uh, the upper triangular portion is reflected in the lower triangular portion. And so you have these number of unique or independent components. So independent components are given for let's say if this index go, went up to n then that would be n squared plus n over 2 um sorry let's just So, uh, independent components. So, total number of elements, n squared is total components.
okay and n is the diagonal components so number of independent elements are the diagonal elements plus the upper triangular elements so upper triangular elements are how many so upper triangular so number of independent components is upper triangular plus diagonal so this is also equivalent to total minus lower triangle so we can write it as so or let us just write it down like this so upper triangle plus diagonal so upper triangular elements are n squared minus n by 2 and diagonal is n okay so how i got this upper triangle as n squared minus n over 2 is because total is n squared and diagonal is n so if you uh, remove and uh, the diagonal elements from the total elements then you are left with uh, upper triangle plus lower triangle and then you divide it by two to get the number of elements in either just the upper triangle or the lower triangle so this gives me so which is n squared plus n by 2 so i had written down this final expression directly without telling you uh, this procedure so that's why i uh, did this procedure to tell you how we came to this expression so in our case n is equal to 3 so n squared plus n by 2 is 3 squared 9 plus 3 by 2 which is equal to 6 so 6 independent uh, components The next question, the number of distinct ways of placing four indistinguishable balls into five distinguishable boxes is, we need to find out. So, what we have is, let us draw five distinguishable boxes. I am using different colors because these are distinguishable boxes. So, labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then we have 4 balls. Which are indistinguishable. So, they are, let me try and draw it as same size and as indistinguishable as possible. So, these are 4 indistinguishable balls. So, number of ways of placing these four balls in five boxes is, so, four balls in five boxes is 5C4 and because they are indistinguishable, so because of the indistinguishability of the balls, uh, we can interchange these balls. So, let's say if these balls are placed like this, one in box 1, 2, 3, 4. But if we interchange these balls within these boxes from 1, 2, 4, uh, they will also be combinations. So, that means we have four factorial ways of arranging in one particular combination and the total number of combinations possible is 5C4. 
so this gives us 4 factorial into 5 factorial by 4 factorial 1 factorial this is 5 factorial which is equal to 120 The next question, the unit vector perpendicular to the surface x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal to 3 at the point 1 comma 1 comma 1 is, we need to find out. So by the way, this surface represents a sphere centered at origin and radius equal to root 3. So let us find out. So this, let's say our function, this is the function. So unit vector perpendicular to a surface. Uh, so perpendicular to surface is given by the gradient of the function. So, gradient of the function is 2x i x cap plus 2y y cap plus 2z z cap. Why? Because gradient of a function is defined as follows. So, this is perpendicular to the surface and for unit vector and or uh, before that let us find it at the point p so at the point p it is 2x cap plus 2y cap plus 2z cap and unit vector perpendicular to surface at p so, unit vector would be obtained by normalizing it. That is, so this is 2x cap plus 2y cap plus 2z cap divided by 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 2 squared square root. So this is simply you who will come out. So this is x cap plus y cap plus z cap over root 3. So the correct option is option D. Moving on to the next question. The matrix A given as follows is we need to find out whether it is orthogonal, symmetric, antisymmetric, or unitary. Now, for any matrix M, it is orthogonal if M transpose M is equal to M, M transpose, which is equal to identity. It is symmetric if M transpose equal to M. It is antisymmetric. If M transpose equal to negative M and it is unitary, if M dagger M equal to M, M dagger, which is equal to identity. Now, clearly, in our case, A transpose is not equal to A and A transpose is also not equal to minus A. So, options B and C are ruled out. Let us look at A transpose A. So, A transpose A, so 1 over root 3, 1 over root 3, that will give me 1 by 3. Let me write down A transpose and then A. So, 
So this is which is clearly not equal to identity. So the only option left is unitary and we can quickly perform a check. So A dagger A, again 1 over 3, then A dagger. So a dagger operation, dagger operation is basically complex conjugate. So it is transpose and complex conjugation. So A dagger. is this so notice that this is equal to a itself so in our case uh, a dagger is equal to a so this property is also known as hermitian property this is 1 over 3 then 3, 0, 0, 3. So this is equal to identity. Similarly, you can check for AA dagger also. That will also come out to be identity. So the correct option is unitary. Moving on to the next question. If fx equal to e to the power minus x squared and gx is equal to mod x e to the power minus x squared then we need to find out which of these statements is correct so for your convenience i have uh, drawn these functions over here so this is blue is f green is g and you can clearly see that f and g are continuous everywhere there is no point of discontinuity but if you look at this point the origin x equal to zero then this is a point where g is not differentiable. Why? Because if you look at the right hand side derivative, so right hand side derivative, the slope is positive over here like this, but the left hand side derivative, the slope is negative like this. So right hand derivative is not equal to left hand derivative as a result it is not differentiable at that point so the correct option is option b f is differentiable everywhere but g is not so f is a gaussian function <coughs> it is differentiable everywhere so differentiability condition is that for something to be differentiable The right hand derivative and left hand derivative should be the same. So if these right hand and left hand derivatives are not same, then the function is not differentiable at that particular point. Moving on to the next question. A function yz satisfies the ordinary differential equation y or double prime plus 1 by z y prime minus m squared by z squared y is equal to 0 where m takes integral values or positive integral values 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. Then we are given four statements. First one is z to the power m and z to the power minus m are linearly independent solutions for all values of m. Next statement is z to the power m and z to the power minus m are linearly independent solutions for all values of m greater than 0. Third statement is ln z and 1 are linearly independent solutions for n equal to 0. And fourth statement is z to the power m and ln z are linearly independent solutions for all values of m. So we need to find out which of these statements is true. So the given ordinary differential equation that we have can be rewritten as follows, rearranging the terms. 
and this written in this form you can clearly see this is nothing but the Euler Cauchy differential equation so the Euler Cauchy equation is given as follows This is the Euler Cauchy equation and for second order you have the following second order Euler Cauchy equation and for this we take a trial solution as uh, y equal to z to the power m and plugging in this trial solution gives us the characteristic so plugging in the trial solution in this differential equation gives us the following characteristic or initial equation as follows so let us z to the power n so n squared plus a minus 1 n plus b equal to 0 and if the roots of this characteristic equation are distinct so distinct roots then the solution is if they are repeated root then the solution is And if there is complex root, complex conjugate root, so the roots in the first case are distinct n1, n2. In the second case, it's repeated n, and in the third case, it is alpha plus minus i beta. Now, in our case, we have a equal to 1 and b equal to minus m squared. So, for and then we have divided into two cases m equal to 0, first case. So, the differential equation is as follows. So, initial equation for this case would be n squared equal to 0 that is n equal to 0 so it is a repeated root case so my solution is y is equal to c1 uh, ln z because z to the power 0 is just 1 plus c2 and for m not equal to 0 my equation is as follows and the initial equation in this case is n squared minus m squared equal to 0 so n equal to plus minus m so this is distinct roots so in this case my independent solutions are ln z and 1 and in this case for non-zero m we have independent solutions as z to the power m and z to the power minus m so let us look at the options so option c is correct q and r only that we have z to the power m and z to the power minus m as linearly independent solutions for m greater than 0 or m not equal to 0 and then we have uh, this part for m equal to 0 the independent solutions are ln z and 1 ln z and 1 and for m greater than 0 z to the power m and z to the power minus m so q and r are correct so option c is the correct option so the next question another question on gradient so the direction of gradient f for a scalar field fx comma y comma z equal to 1 by 2 x squared minus xy plus 1 by 2 z squared 
at the point p 1 comma 1 comma 2 is we need to find out the value of uh, the direction of this gradient so gradient is defined as follows so in our case this is equal to x minus y i cap minus x j cap plus z k cap and at the point p it is 0 i cap minus j cap plus 2 k cap and when we normalize it then we will get the direction even here we get the direction so it is minus j plus 2 k so option b is the correct option so normalizing would give us square root 1 squared plus 2 squared and that is uh, root 5. So this is the direction, normalized direction. The last question, consider the differential equation dy by dx plus y tan x equal to cos x. If y at x equal to 0 is equal to 0, then y at x equal to pi by 3 is, we need to find out. So let us look at our differential equation. So this is a first order a linear differential uh, equation of the form of the following form. And the solution to this is given as follows. So we find out what is called the integrating factor. So integrating factor is e to the power integral p dx and then the solution is given as y into integrating factor is equal to integral of q into integrating factor plus a constant. Now in our case p is tan x and q is cos x. So let us find out the integrating factor. So integrating factor is e to the power integral tan x dx. Now integral of tan x is nothing but ln sec x. So this is sec x. And so solution is y into sec x is equal to integral cos x sec x dx plus c. So this is integral dx plus c which is x plus c. So my solution is y is equal to x plus c divided by sec x which is equal to x plus c times cos x. So this is my solution. Now we are given that y at x equal to 0 is equal to 0. So using this condition we have 0 is equal to cos of cos of 0 is 1. So this is equal to c. So c is 0. Therefore my uh, final solution is y is equal to x cos x. Now y at x equal to pi by 3 would then be equal to pi by 3 cos pi by 3 and cos pi by 3 is nothing but 1 over 2 so this is equal to pi over 6 and this comes out to be roughly equal to 0 0.52 so this is the correct option uh, sorry the correct answer this is a numerical answer type question you need to provide the value of uh, the numerical value of the answer so this completes our final session for this course on gate physics problem solving and hope you learned quite a few things uh, in this course. So in this course, just to summarize, in this course, we have looked at four topics from gate physics, uh, general aptitude, uh, mathematical physics, electromagnetic theory, and quantum mechanics. So these are the four topics that we have 
uh, looked at in this course and every week we have solved uh, a few general aptitude questions and a few questions technical physics based questions from the remaining three topics and today we looked at mathematical physics and today was the final concluding session of this course i would once again put up the relevant links in the zoom chat box so these links are youtube channel link google drive link and discord server link so even though uh, this course is over, as I mentioned earlier, the Discord server is still active. So you can post your questions still on the Discord server and I will uh, have a look at it and answer those questions uh, for you. And apart from that, you could still post your questions on the YouTube channel and I would have a look at it and try to create more such video problem solving sessions for you. So maybe I can take up a few questions from the discord server and create some video tutorials for you but for the course for this 12 week course today is the final session after this there is going to be no live streaming or no live session or live mentoring what sessions after this only the discord server is there and if i feel that there is a lot of confusion regarding some topics then i can create some youtube tutorials for you so thank you very much and hopefully uh, you learned something from this course and hopefully we will try and solve as many uh, questions in the future as possible. So thank you very much.